Maybe it's that. Oh, there it is. Praise the Lord, everyone. <laughs> God is good. Um, we have a couple uh, reports here. Um, Sister uh, Rowell has a prayer request for Michael Sater. He needs salvation and a job. So let's keep him in prayer that the Lord will bless him with a job and deal with his heart. Uh, Sister Lagabo, her, she has a neighbor, um, and she's home from the hospital. The test should show nothing wrong. And we prayed for her, what, Sunday night? Praise the Lord, nothing wrong. To God be the glory. Let's just praise him for that. Hallelujah. He is worthy. And then um, does anybody else have a prayer request that they want to make known? Sister? Oh, him? Not you? Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, yes, let's pray for Sister Caldwell. She's not feeling well. She's very sick. So let's keep her in her prayers. Anybody else? Okay. Let's pray for Sister Sue's ear. She's got some ear problems. Nikki. Bill is needing a divine healing and a place to live, Brother John. Ooh. Okay, Nikki Bill. Oh, let's pray for that, yes, in the name of Jesus. Well, your, your dad? Okay, let's pray for Brother Rouse's dad uh, for healing. So if everybody will stand, and I just have a little scripture, just a small scripture. Uh, where their spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we are going to act like we got some liberty up in here. That's freedom. Yes. Hallelujah. Um, brother, um, would you lead us into prayer? Brother Josh. Hallelujah. glorify you Jesus let's just worship him oh God you're worthy of all of our praise Lord thank you Jesus oh how beautiful are you Lord it's your words it's your Save me and rescued me just a moment then you sent me free yes I give you glory glory I give you glory glory I give you glory glory Jesus I give you glory glory I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. Jesus. Oh, how beautiful are you, Lord? It's your word. It's your love. Oh, how Save me, oh yes, and rescued me. Just a moment there, you set me free. Yes, I give you glory, hallelujah. I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory, Jesus. 
give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. Jesus. And with a crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with a crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with a crown of thorns, you became my king forever. With a crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with a crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with a crown of thorns, you became my
to God he set me free well goodbye to sin and things that confound not of this world shall turn me around daily I'm working on praying to well glory to God I'm pulling through well he set me free yes he set me free he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory for my Jesus. Glory to God, He set me free. Well, he set me free, yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory for my Jesus. Glory to God, He set me free. Oh, has He set you free? Has He broke your chains and healed your life? Oh, God, we give you the glory, Jesus. Oh, I was lost, but now I am found. I was bound, but now I am free. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. was a rage I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time and sin separated the breach was far too hot but from the first sign of the chasm you can me your side so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and there at the cross you paid the debt I owed broke my chains freed my soul for the first time I had hope thank you Jesus for the blood thank you Jesus it has washed me wide thank you Jesus you have into glorious light and you took my place laid inside my tomb of sin you were buried for three days but then you all tried out again and now death has no sin and life has no end for i have been transformed by the blood of the lamb thank you jesus for thank you jesus it has washed me Across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, he paid the dead we owe. My chains freed my soul 
For the first time I had hope Thank you Jesus for the blood applied Thank you Jesus it has washed me white Thank you Jesus you have saved my life Brought me from the darkness into glorious light stronger than the wonder working power of the blood, the blood that calls us sons and daughters. We are ransomed by our Father through the blood, the blood. stronger than the wonder working power of the blood the blood because the sons and daughters we are ransomed by our father through the blood the blood Let's thank him for that. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus. We worship you, God. We praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are thankful for the blood that he shed upon Calvary? Hallelujah. We praise your name, God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Real quick, before we have the announcements, we do have a couple prayer requests. Michael Sater, Satter needs salvation and a job. And then uh, Sister Vilagabo is uh, asking for healing. Her neighbor is home from the hospital. The test, it's a praise report. Test showed nothing wrong. Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord for that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Real quick, let's lift our, our hands and pray for this Michael Sater, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, that you would move within Michael's life. God, I pray that you would open his eyes, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would speak to his heart, God. God, that you would draw him to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let goodness and mercy follow him all the days of his life. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that he would be filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in the name of Jesus. God, and I pray, Lord, that you would also, God, give him a job, Lord Jesus. Open doors, Lord, for employment. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor and praise. And everybody say amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. August 4th is Southern Youth Quake. It's at 7.30 p.m. at Faith Tabernacle in Tucson. Uh, they're asking to meet at the church at 5 p.m. Uh, Saturday, August 5th, we have broken carpet in the Annex building and a project to replace the carpeting with wood tiles similar to the kitchen has started. Uh, we need some men to help with Moving things around this Saturday afternoon to help with this project. Please see uh, Brother John and Brother Francisco after church if you are able to help uh, Saturday. Is there a time for that? Yeah.
All right. Okay. Okay. All right. August 18th, there's a youth and hyphen service here at Lighthouse Church. August 25th, there is a men's outing at main event at 6.30 p.m. See for Brother John for details. Uh, that is in the Gilbert location. And then August 26th, scorpion hunting. I don't know. I mean, at least it ain't snake hunting, handling. Uh, scorpion hunting, 7.30 p.m. Bring a black light and uh, see Sister Angela for details. Hallelujah. Let's remember our pastor and his wife and Sister Taylor and Sister Angela as they're on their way to the Solomon Islands for their mission trip. Pray that God would move and bless in that. Amen. Would our ushers come at this time? Remember on Sunday, invite a friend, invite your family if they have no church to go to, uh, or a friend if they're going to another non-apostolic church, invite them to worship with us. We're going to have Pastor Sansom here on, uh, in the morning and the evening. There's going to be a powerful move of God in those services, so remember that. And come early for prayer because it is prayer that sets the tone for the service. Amen. You can always tell how a service is going to go by how the prayer meeting goes beforehand. Amen. Praise God. Brother Adrian, would you pray over the offer? Hey. 
heavens has your glory filled this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens has your glory filled this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens has your glory filled this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names worthy is your name jesus you deserve the praise Let's give him the praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, mighty God. Thank you. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. He is worthy. He is more worthy than we can ever know. The things he's done, the things he's did just to hang on a cross for us. He's worthy just, I mean, it's, you can always say to the moon and back as people say, but I don't even think it's, I think it's more than that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to, today I was here and I was thinking where he's brought me from. And I tell you, if I took you on that journey, You'd ask why I'm up here. But tonight, I'm not going to worry about, I want to worry about where he took me from, but I want to just praise him for what he's brought me and where he's taken me to. If we can stand, I would tell you that I'm going to be short, but I don't know. And I'm going to be honest with you tonight. This has been on my heart. I had this um, middle of last week. Everything that has been led up to this service tonight has been in line of where we're, where this message is going. So just bear with me. Um, I had talked to Pastor about this on Sunday. when he, I didn't know what he preached Sunday morning, but his scripture is pretty close to where I'm at. And I'm like, man, I told him, he goes, man, you're right on target. And I said, well. God is on target. God knew exactly what we need to be and what we need to hear tonight. We're going to go to Acts 27, 27 through 32, and then we're going to skip down to 40. And after that, I'll have you be seated. It says, when the, 14, when the 14th night had come, as we were being driven across the Atlantic Sea about midnight, I'm reading in the, this is going to be the English version, uh, uh, English standard version, so bear with me. <coughs> Uh, suspected that they were nearing land. So they took a s sounding and found 20 fathoms, a little farther than they took sounding, ag <coughs> sounding again, of found of 15 fathoms. Fathoms is about six foot, and they use the arm strength between we finger fingers stretched out is how they, how they um, measured where they were going and how far they were coming from and where they're going on the ship when they were sailing across the sea. And fearing that we might run into the rocks, that they lay, that they lay down four anchors, from the stern and prayed for the day to come. And as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship and had lowered the ship, the boat into the sea under the, under the pretense of laying out anchors from the bow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes in the ship's boat and, and let it go. Let's go to 40. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loose the 
rubber, reloose the rubber bands and hoist up the mansail to the wind and made toward shore. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to give us tonight, Lord, the word we're going to have tonight, Lord. Pray for us tonight, Lord. Worship with us tonight. Please touch us tonight. Give us strength tonight. Touch his lips of clay tonight. Thank you in your name. Amen. You can be seated. I do want to honor my pastor, his wife, while they're traveling for the opportunity, and Brother Caldwell as well for just being here and giving me the time up here. I don't take it lightly. We're going to start off. A lot of us have been on a boat. A lot of us know what an anchor is. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about how strong is your anchor. I want to, I want to start tonight. On A lot of us go out and we maybe get on a boat and we cast an anchor. Maybe it's atta- attached to a rope. Maybe it's attached to a chain. Um everybody's different. Everything's different depending on heavy, how heavy the boat is. It's kind of like our burdens. How heavy are our burdens? How heavy are our storms to keep us where we need to be? But the, liter- the, the meaning behind the anchor sy- symbol is, I, I got this and I re- this was pretty good. It says, the purpose of an anchor is to stop the ship, stabilize it in the water, and hold it steadfast. And intends the intended location it said that the sailors believed that the anchors serve as a refuge from the storm, symbolic of hope for a calm sea. In Hebrews 6 and 18, it says that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong conversation with <clears throat> who have fled for refuge to lay, upon, to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. We have to have Jesus. Jesus is our anchor. Jesus is the one that we go to, the one that has all the answers for us. Sometimes we don't know the answers, but he does. Sometimes he don't, we don't know the future, but he does. We have to understand, when that anchor is set in that ground, when that anchor is set in that ground and attached to a chain, or a rope, it is keeping us where we need to be at that point in time in our life. A cargo ship weighs 220,000 pounds, or 220,000 tons. An anchor weighs 36 tons. A chain that holds an anchor is 20,500 pounds. I'm going to let you know that without God as our anchor, where will we be drifting to? Without God as our anchor, Will we be making decisions where we know we're not supposed to go, or are we making decisions where we think we need to go? It says an anchor is sometimes that provides a firm foundation and security in Scripture. The, the term anchor is used to represent God and faith, that which keeps us steadfast and gives us hope during the trials and storms of life. When you get on a boat, When you get on a boat and you sail for a while and you have no clue where you're going. And what I'm talking about is when you're on your life span, you're on your life journey. And you're moving through the journey of life. You're moving through the ways of life. But sometimes God has an anchor and he sets it down for you. Sometimes that anchor gets missed and it don't attach to where you're supposed to be. And sometimes it does. But sometimes we need to be making sure we're in prayer to know where we're going. Because when we're in prayer with God, God can kind of guide us where we need to set anchor at. Today, my, that's what I was talking about earlier about my life, because where he's brought me from is something remarkable in my eyes. I'm not saying I was the worst person in the world, but we did, some, we did things we weren't supposed to. All of us have. But being transparent with you tonight is sometimes I would set that anchor but is it where God really wanted me to be at the time? Sometimes you think it isn't or you get just an illusion, like you're out in, the, out in the desert and you're thinking you see water, but there's no water there. And the illusion that the devil can give you sometimes is this is where you're supposed to be, but really you're not supposed to be there at that particular time because he has shaded you. He has put a, put a wool over your eyes, per se, 
and made it believe that that's where you're supposed to be. So you set anchor there, but nothing's going like it's supposed to. And you can't figure out what's going on because you believe that you're in the will of God. And when you believe you're in the will of God, you're steadfast. You're there. But there is a chain that's attached to that anchor. And I believe that that chain that's attached to that anchor is prayer. And I believe without that chain stretched out, say that chain is 20 foot, say it's 20 foot in the ground, and you're, that's about all you're going to, you're not going to go any further than that 20 foot span. Without prayer, you don't know if you need to lift that anchor up because the anchor is going to put it down, lift it up, and keep it there for you with the weight of the anchor in the ground. So Jesus is the anchor, and you're praying is, is how I look at this, is how God gave this to me. And I believe that if you don't pray and find and seek what God really wants you to do, that chain can just be cut and you could be drifting somewhere. Because that storm's going to come. And when that storm comes, that anchor is to hold you. The anchor holds. There's a song, the anchor holds. There's a reason for that. Because in the midst of the storm, that anchor is supposed to hold you strong to where you are. And if you're not held strong to where you are, that rope could break, that chain can break, or that anchor can give. But I'm here tonight not to beat nobody up. I'm here to tell all of us, including myself, that some of us are in a storm right now. And maybe that anchor is just given just a little bit. Just a little bit. Because what we're trying to do is run from the storm instead of go through it. I believe that if we go through the storm, anchor down, at the other end of that storm, you're going to find what you're looking for. God's already, God already has it ready for you. You just got to wait and be patient for it. And a lot of us, including myself, are not patient enough to see exactly what's on the other side of that storm. You know... Where I come from, where God brought me from, up and down like a roller coaster. Because I wasn't listening to what God really had in store for me. Slash, I was running from it too. Had a calling. Not that I was afraid of the calling, but I was afraid of the responsibility of the calling. And so I ran. Tried to avoid it. Tried to... Just try to not... I, tr I tried not to be responsible for what the calling wanted me to do, and I just I figured it was easier just to pull up and leave. I'm saying bouncing church to church. I didn't ever do that. I did get out of church a few times because the world was bit into me, and I was right torn between that anchor coming up and that anchor holding. But I didn't want to be... I just didn't want I just want I didn't want to have that responsibility and be in there. But where God's brought me from since I've been in this church since almost oh man, it's almost uh almost 10 years. This has probably been the most that I've been as close to God as I've been in my life. And I'm going to tell you right now. You think Things go rough, and we had some rough patches. I've called Brother Caldwell, and I've asked him a couple things, and he said, you know what? And I've said this a lot of times, but I, this sticks to me more than I've ever. I, and this is the one thing that Brother Caldwell has told me the whole time, and he's always saying that the devil will make it look good for you. And sometimes it's not the right way to go. And that's what was going on. I was thinking that I had to, to pull that anchor up and move on and go somewhere else. But that's not what he was trying to do for me. What he was trying to do is root me in root me in stronger and get me stronger, closer to him, to the walk that I am now, to get close as I am to now. The last, I'm going to tell you, in the last six months, things have shifted. When pastor has been talking about a spiritual shift and a shift of all of us getting closer to God. I'm going to tell you this story. There's a reason I'm telling you this story because somebody needs to hear it. I don't know. But God, I didn't have this intention to tell you until I got here today. But God told me to tell my story. And I didn't get the whole version for you because we'll be here for hours. But I believe that God has planted me in a situation right now. And that anchor, he put that anchor down so strong right now so I don't leave. Because he made me feel 
and he showed me what I needed to go to do. He shows me what I need. He showed me where I'm going to go. Just a little bit of it, though. He didn't give me all of it. He just gave me a little bit. And when he gave me that, and when the, when the spiritual, just everything just starts shifting, things are, things are changing. I'm changing. The way, I, the way I feel, the way everything's going right now, everything's changing. Yes, I'm flesh, and yes, you're going to do things, but I'm telling you, in the spiritual realm, God is here. I promise you, that chain, that anchor, I'm here. Some of us out here right now maybe need to hear this, but if you plant that anchor where you're supposed to be, and I'm going to go ahead and look at everybody because everybody right now is about a regular. There might be a few missing because they're out and gone, maybe going to some island or something. But I believe that everybody here is here for a reason, and I believe everybody's here for the same reason. And the same reason is for us to get closer to God. And I know, and I can tell you, this is not, this is not on my notes, but I can tell you that somebody in here, God has been dealing with you heavy to plant that anchor stronger but you're kind of backtracking from it. You just, I don't know if I want to dig it in that deep. But if you don't, I'm going to tell you right now that God is not going to let you see what is in store for you. And I promise your life will be changed forever. You think it's changed now, but it's, I, I was, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, what God has in store for us, is unbelievable. I'm going to tell you that way right there because it's unbelievable. But I believe it because God said it. I'm going to go to Isaiah 40 and 31. And it says, but they, have, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not be faint. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going we're gonna to fight a lot of fights. We're going to go through a lot of storms. We're going to... I mean, there's a lot of us fighting a storm right now that you can't, that I'm sure a lot of us can't see. I promise you, all of us are. It ain't just me, it ain't just, it ain't, it ain't, Brother Nate, it's everybody. We're fighting a storm. And the reason we're fighting this storm right now, because that anchor's holding. And the other side of that storm is going to be the revival that's going to blow our minds. In Lamentations 3, 21 through 26, it says, but this I call to mind, and therefore that I hope the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. You know, before I go any farther, his love doesn't ever end for us. For somebody to, to, to hang on a cross and do what he did for us. And then on the flip side of it, just to guide us and direct us and keep us trying to straight and narrow. And if we obey what he does... That love is, is, is strong. They are new, they are, they are new every morning. <clears throat> Great is the faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Thereof I will hope in him. The Lord is good for those who wait for him. As I said, it tells you right there in Scripture, black and white. If you wait, the Lord is good for those who wait. Like I said, be patient. Because on the other side of that storm, and I don't know if you are going through the storm or you're about to go through the storm. You can see the clouds and the yonder. It's coming. Just buckle down. Be ready. Withstand those winds. And I promise you it's going to be worth it all. The Lord is good to those who wait for him and the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Just wait quietly. We can't complain. We can't moan and groan about it. You know, I've, I've took, before all this happened, there's a lot of things going on. Work gets slow. It's been slow. But you know what I said? I told my wife, I said, it'll be all right. God's got it in control. He knows what he's doing. I don't know. I don't stress out no more like I used to. I'm not. It's going to be what it's going to be. But we have to remember because that storm's going through, God's making us stronger through that storm. That chain and that, and that, and that anchor, when that wind blows in a, in a storm, all that anchor's doing right now is getting deeper and deeper rooted in that ground. So that way, when you come out the other side, you can release it and feel something, a release of whatever you're going through, financial, whatever it is. 
It's going to come to an end because God will not let us suffer for more than we can handle. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, <laughs> casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. You, your adversary, the devil, prowls around you like a roaring lion, seeking someone he can devour. I'm going to tell you right now, in the midst of that storm, he's, the, he's trying to, he's in your ear. Hey, just pick up that anchor and leave. It's fine. Just go. Let's just go. You know, what I was going to do is I was going to put a two-by-four with some shoes and nail them to them and have somebody stand on them as an anchor, but I, didn't, I had to get the right pair of shoes for the right person. But he can be in Brother Nathan's ear telling him, hey, you're not going to make the school. You're not going to pass that test. You're not going to do what you think you're going to do. But he passed the test. He might be going through a storm, but he pushed through it. I believe that the devil can do many things to us, but that tells me he's, in, he's backing up. He's in, he's in the last resort trying to figure out something he can get us caught on because he's trying everything he can not to fulfill what God wants us to fulfill. He wants us to slip up and take our flesh and just, and just slip up. But we have to be strong. Resist him firm in the faith, knowing that the sa that same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Uh, 1 Peter 5 and 10, it says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God, God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So you're going to be established after the anchor holds, after that chain don't give out, after that storm passes. He's going to establish you and give you what God wants. God is going to give you everything that is in line with him, not what, what you want, but what God wants. Some of us just get scared, not because we don't want to do it. We just get scared because we don't know how it's going to happen or how it's going to go on. But God does. God knows. 5.11, it says, to him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians 1.20 20 through 23, it says, which he Brought in Christ, we raised his from the dead <clears throat> and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. For above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And that hath pulled all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth out all in all. Let's just remember. We have a spiritual walk that we have to remember. we, we got to walk. It's important to make that next move. But we have to make that next move in God's will and God's what, what he has created for us, what door he has opened for us. And when he opens that door, we just got to look around and enjoy whatever it is. Because God made it, God created it, and God opened it. You know, our theme is now. Before it was open door, and this wasn't even in, but... We opened the door, and now we're here. Now we're going to step to the next step. And that next step is getting us closer to the next building, to the next, that revival. Whatever's coming next, it's going to be super strong because in, in the spiritual realm because I'm going to tell you right now, the way we're going through it and the way some of us are going through it right now, I feel that that's a lot of us. I know some of us, but I know there's other than just myself and a couple others in here. But whatever's on the other side of that storm, is going to be mighty, powerful, and of God. On pastor, a pastor said Sunday night, it says to be uh, on on the twenty third when he when he just says to, to be committed to your pastor. Being committed to your pastor is like setting your anchor because you're being committed to whatever is in store from the from depth from from God to your pastor to whatever else is going. You have to be committed. You have to be anchored. And ready. So if some of us aren't anchored, some of us need to get started, get anchored, or figure, try to pray and find out where we need to anchor at and what's coming down the pipe. Because it's coming. Because we don't, we don't see revival, we don't see growth without something coming through a storm. Because there's always something good on the other side. That's why there's always a rainbow on the other side. To give us promise. 
Not, not anything else. It's to give us promise. Because if, if God gives us promise, he's going to show us promise. And that promise was shown to us when Noah got out of that boat after all that rain with that rainbow. I'm going to read something from this book. I've been reading this book. It's called The Book of Prayer from King Gurley. I'm going to read this a part of it here that really kind of set the tone of, of where it comes from. It says, he wants to walk with me. That just boggles my mind. Why would Jesus Christ want to walk with me? Who am I? I that, a, I that a king would say, let's go for a walk. I feel like falling to the floor and merely saying, thank you, Lord, especially when I think about the times that I've left him hanging and still he awaits. Maybe your walk of prayer has been reduced to a crawl. Time and events have distracted you. And you, you will find yourself powerless, friendless, and hopeless. Come back, come back to the garden. He said, if you draw near to him, he will, he will again draw near to you. I'm going to tell you right now. Some of us are maybe hanging on that chain. And all we have to do, you might be halfway through that chain. And if you start praying and you're asking God where the direction he wants you to go, you might be that, that It might be settling and anchoring in to direct us in the way we need to go. Because that anchor is strong. God is strong. God is not lies. God is promise. He's not going to give you a misdirection. He's going to tell you exactly what he stands for and what he holds for and what's coming down the line. Noah, Noah, held, Noah held his anchor down by building an ark. As everybody else was making fun and not going to be a knock on the door. Hey, let me in. Let me in. But he was held because he did exactly what God intended him to do. That was his anchor. You have Moses. You know, Moses drifted. He left. And then it was hard for him to come. He kept saying he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. But God said, in me, you can. With me, you can. And that's what happened. Moses invested in, and, and took heed of what God had in store for him and just went. Just because he stuttered, he didn't really know what he was talking, how, how to talk. He, he had somebody. He, here, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you somebody else. I'm going to give you somebody else. Here, let's do this. Moses did it through God. God helped him because Moses followed the direction of God. And that's what we have to do. We have to anchor down and follow the direction of God tonight. Jesus had an anchor for us, and that anchor was a cross, and he was set to die for us. He set himself up to come, to walk, to preach, to teach, and keep moving forward with 12 friends, 12 people to help him spread the gospel. He gave his only son on a cross. And don't, let's not say us. Every point to me. Every say me. Me. He died for you. He died for me. He died for the people in here. He died for everybody. But that was his anchor. He anchored on a cross. Shed his blood on a cross. Got spiked in on a cross. All because he wanted to make sure we are all saved. That makes me right there just want to follow him. It says in the prayer that if you want to take a walk with God and you don't know why the king wants to walk with you, the king wants to walk with you because he loves you. The king wants to walk with you because there's hope of an eternal life that we can see forever. I'm going to start closing. I, don't want, I, want to, I do want people to have a chance to pray. There's, to me, I, I kind of got three anchors. The first anchor is not set yet, so your anchor is here, but you haven't dropped it. And I don't know why you haven't dropped it, but you haven't dropped it. You might be afraid. You might be thinking that it's not for you. You might be thinking you're in the right place. Make sure you pray. Make sure you hold fast and make sure you find out what God wants in store for you before you drop that anchor. That way you know where you're supposed to be. The set anchor has already been set in stone. You already know where you're supposed to be. You already know where you're going. 
the next step is to go through the storm and find out what's on the other side. Because if you don't find out what's on the other side, what did you be patient for and wait for? Did you wait for just something? Are you expecting the miracle? Are you expecting whatever comes your way to be whatever you want? No, you're expecting it to be what God wants. You're expecting it to be to what God has in store for you. Because whatever is in store for you, whatever is in store for this church is going to be in store for you if your anchor is set and that's where you're supposed to be. And I believe everybody in here should have their anchor set in here. Because this is where you're supposed to be. If you weren't supposed to be here, I believe that you would try to make your own decision and walk away. But God's telling you not to. Or have you set your anchor? Have you set that anchor? And then you just cut it. Now you're lost at sea and you're somewhere out there just wondering. Because some people get to be wondering. You can still be coming here, but you're wondering if you're supposed to be here. You're wondering if you're supposed to be in this church. You're wondering if you're supposed to be in this state. But God has an answer for you. You just haven't got that answer because you haven't dropped on your knees far enough to get it. And I believe that some of us in here, maybe one, needs to do that. Because God's going to tell you exactly what to do. And then your blessing, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Your, your blessing is right around the corner, right through that storm. That storm can be right through that door. But you have to set that anchor. Because God has something in store for you. I don't know if it's a financial need. I don't know if it's something you've been praying about for your loved ones. I don't know what it is. But there's something. I feel the Holy Ghost on that. There's something in here. That somebody has set that anchor, ready to go for it, and move forward. But you're lost at sea because you already cut it because you have no clue. You couldn't pull it up. You know why you couldn't pull it up? Because you haven't been down there praying enough to get that chain pulled up yet. You can't get that chain, so you just cut it and, and just release. Now you're floating around trying to figure out what's going on. Let's not be a floater. Let's be an anchor. Let's trust the anchor of God. Let's trust God to be our anchor and make him, let him show us what we need to do. So to me, my question to you tonight, I don't want the answers. I don't want you to raise your hand, but which one are you? Which anchor are you? Are you going to be? Are you going to be the anchor? But the question is, how strong is that anchor? If you already cut it away, the anchor was strong. It was you that wasn't strong. An anchor keeps the vessel from being afloat. An anchor keeps it in place. I, and I wrote this a little while ago. It says, your anchor is strong, but let me tell you, here's something to attach to the anchor to bring it up and down, which is the chain. Keeping this vessel from going far away or in close, it keeps it steady. And it's the chain. The chain is your prayer life. So let's remember that the anchor attached to that chain, attached to that vessel, you're the vessel. The chain's your prayer life, and the anchor holds you there. Can we remember that? Because if we remember that, it keeps us close, We're and it's supposed to move us up and down, that chain. But let me tell you, it's, that anchor keeps us grounded. If you don't, don't want to move around and don't want to be floating free, just believe in what God has for you. Because God is the anchor, and he's not going to steer you wrong. He's not going to let you afloat out far away. In Acts 27, 32, it says, Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the ship, ship's boat, and let it go. They cut the anchor, and they're floating. They're just floating away, having no clue where they're going. A storm could be coming in. But let's get a hold of what God has for us tonight. I'm going to close. I just want to say this one last thing. We have to be grounded, and we have to understand what God has in store for us. All the way down from the kids that are in here, because they all understand right now. They're old enough. If they're at four years old getting the Holy Ghost and getting baptized, they're understanding. From when Pastor preached on the 23rd to him, I guess he preached on hope or something. I, I haven't missed that message. I need to listen to it. And then us having a service like we did Sunday night. 
And I, if I'm not mistaken, didn't we pray for Sister Global, your neighbor, on Sunday evening? Because I was up here. That service, God heals. I'm going to tell you right now. And that service right there, that service Sunday night was the most powerful service that I've probably been in in a long, long time. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you didn't get your anchor held put down then, get it tonight. Because I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to go through some storms, but hold on tight, hold on strong, because God's got something for you. Let's stand. As we come, put this in our, I want you to just put this in your mindset and ask yourself this question tonight. Which anchor am I? And if, you're, if you need something from the Lord tonight, come up here because he has it for you. And if you need to set that anchor tonight, come up here. You can set it tonight. And if that anchor's already set tonight, come up here and pray for the storm that you're going to go through, that you can endure it, and that you can handle for the, the, other, the outcome on the other side.